sheets. I, I know there's four. There's a lot there. We're, don't worry. We're not going through all that. <laughs> that's something you can take home. And, and uh, I've had a lot of fun. In fact, if you want, here are half the notes. <laughs> Been studying and, and, and had about, I told Sweet I said, well, I got 30 pages. And she said, that's too many. And I said, yeah, but there, there's 12 other over here. <laughs> and so... And then I found about five more. So it, it is fun to be with y'all. Thank you so very much. I do want to open with prayer. There's not anything more important than we'll do tonight than pray anyway. Um, but the question is, how about your heart? And that starts with me. Listen, guys, I'm excited. I'm excited about the way the election went, okay? I really am. However, I'm going to tell you, guys, when I was coaching, the two things that scare, you the mo scare a coach the most when you have a big victory and when you have a big loss. The big loss, you get down and you don't think you'll ever be able to recover. You don't ever see any hope. And that's bad. And the same thing is true in the spiritual walk. And sometimes after a big win, uh, in fact, one year, God bless me with such great talent, we were 26 and 4, and if our center hadn't been ineligible, we would have won the state championship. They beat us three points at their place and uh, without our center. It was the week of the tournament. We lost it. And, and I didn't know anything about basketball. But, but after a big season, I thought, I, I, I think I got this. I think I know pretty good. A lot of pride. And then the next year, we were 5 and 15. <laughs> I found out I wasn't near as good as I thought it was. 
So, but here's some prayer requests tonight. First of all, Gail has uh, some information if you'd like some for December the 14th, the, uh, the Christmas party. Is that right? Okay. And uh, they, uh, Tim and Pat Curtis wanted to let you all know that they're not, they came by today uh, to let us know we need to be praying for their, her brother, Harley, Har Harley. Uh, and they're going up there, and they're not going to be back for a few weeks, and they didn't want people to think that something was wrong or they left. And we need to be praying for them as they go up to spend some time with him. He has cancer, and he's, uh, he's, he's just in bad shape. Uh, and Dave and Bobby Alfrey, we want to, I want to personally thank uh, Rick and Mary Hopper. I know they didn't do it for, uh, to get a pat on the back. But somewhere early this morning, they got a phone call that said, could you go pick up Dave and Bobby? And they never blinked an eye. And, uh, yeah, thank you so very much. And then last night, uh, Bob, uh, Dave wound up, he had a tooth extracted, and they couldn't stop the bleeding, and there was a lot of bleeding. Will you agree with that? Uh, Robert was out there, I'm talking about a huge amount of blood, and that was just out there. That was... It was worse than that before he got there. And it was like that all the way over there. And it was still like that when, when Robert got there. And uh, we don't want to thank Robert for taking uh, Bobby over there so she could be with him. And uh, so thank you. This church has, has a lot of loving people. And then on my phone this morning, she called at 420 and, and said, can you come get me? And so I, I, I said, oh, man, I don't, I don't have two hours sleep. And I sat down on the couch, and I pulled up, uh, pulled up Barry's phone number, Barry Rare, and uh, but I thought I cannot call him at this hour, so I'll just wait a few minutes, give him a little, a little time to rest, and I, and, I, and the next thing I knew it was 7:30. <laughs> I'd fallen asleep, but he would have gone, and that's how this that's how this peop, that's how you all are. And I just pray that God will continue to use you all to reach people and help people and encourage people when they're hurting at their worst moment. And uh, Dave is still, I continue to pray for him. He lost a, he lost a lot, of, lot of blood. And, uh, he had the surgery Tuesday week. Yeah, Tuesday week ago. And he'd been bleeding all this time. Yeah. And he called, called Bobby and said, you need to get home. I'm in trouble. And the sink was full. And, yeah, it, it was not good. Uh, Aiden Reeves, this is a young man that uh, Robert discovered over there when he took uh, Bobby. And that uh, Aiden's brother is in the hospital. Yes. No, yeah. No, it was Aiden, but I met his brother. It's Aiden. He met his brother. Aiden, we want to pray for Aiden. Bad car wreck. Bad car wreck. Uh, we want to pray for Judy Horn. She's getting better, but we want to continue to pray for her. Uh, it's hard for her to sleep when she's got <laughs> snoring all night with Robert. I know, cause he, he, uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I don't snore. I stayed awake one night just to see, and I didn't snore. <laughs> <laughs> when well, last night, <laughs> Lynn, Lynn Butterfield had her surgery and is doing pretty good. Yeah, she's doing well. We want She's doing well. Doing well. We want to continue to pray for both of them, though. We miss, we miss seeing Lynn. We miss seeing Judy. And Miranda uh, used to be Cully. Probably a few. Mike Cully. Any of you remember Mike? Okay. It's his daughter. And she's a rector up in Kansas City. And they discovered uh, breast cancer and some of the lymph nodes. And uh, she's young. And just be in prayer for her. Uh, <laughs> And I think that is the prayer request. Uh, who has a mic? We'd like someone to pray. Who's got the mic? Robert, you got the mic over there? No, sir. Yeah. You got one right there, bro. I tell you what. Let's just let's just bow. Let's just bow for prayer in a few minutes. Uh, you pray at your table. In fact, if you, you you don't have to do this, but if you want to join hands, join hands. If you don't, don't. But uh, just bow, and I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i give a request, and you all pray for it silently or out loud, as there's not anything more important that we'll do than pray. There's not anything more important. That is our access to God's power. And I know, I know this, a lot of people don't 
say they don't believe in it, but I guarantee you our phone rings off the wall sometimes with people that act like they don't believe. But you know the first thing they do when they're in trouble? They call and say, can you what? Can you pray? So if y'all would just bow it where you are, right there at your table. First, I, I just love for you to ask God, God, silently on this one, God, evaluate my heart. Psalm 139, to evaluate my heart. How about my heart? Is it right with you? Especially with us men. We have a lot of pride. We don't want to admit it. That's the truth. Me too. Me first. Just ask God to evaluate your heart. Where is it tonight? Is it right with him? That's what Daryl sang about a while ago. Very powerful song. You know, people see us on the outside. We look pretty good and smile and laugh and act like everything's okay. But Jesus sees the inside. He sees the inside. Now, if you would, just pray for, pray for Judy Horn. Pray for Lynn Butterfield. Pray for Michaela Coley. Pray for Aiden Reeves. Pray for Tim and Pat Curtis's, uh, Pat's brother Har Harley has cancer. Pray for both Dave and Bobby. It's Dave that's hurting, but uh, as Rick indicated when he came back, she was very tired, very tired. When just a, it was a long physical night for her, but it was a long emotional night too. And Robert, if you close us in prayer, please. I'm trying, Coach. Here it is. Father Lord, we uh, we just give you the praise and the thanks. Uh, Lord, for all that you do for us. and Lord, we do believe in prayer. Uh, someone uh, in this department told me they ran into a person in the in Mountain Home that uh, doesn't go here, but they said, oh, you're the church that prays, so I've got a prayer request for you. And they sent uh, a prayer request to this church. And Lord, we, uh, we do believe in prayer, and we just thank you for uh, those people that are mentioned here, especially Dave and Bobby tonight. Mm -hmm. And for Pat uh, Curtis's brother Harley, and, and for the young man that I ran into that was in the car wreck, broke his back last night, yesterday. And, uh, the young man, his brother, said he took one step, and uh, that was the doctors were convinced that he could walk again. So, Father, I lift him up to you, lift the doctors up to you, and uh, Lord, there's several others I know that need uh, need a touch from you. They need healing whether it be spiritual, whether it be physical. Lord, let's pray that you would meet their needs in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, if you will, if you've got your Bibles, you can open to Mark chapter 12, verse 28. Uh, I'd encourage you to underline, write, write in your Bible. Uh, again, we're not going to cover all of this. It would be impossible. In fact, I still have about seven pages of notes on the computer for the for the last for the next to the last verse of this, so you don't you, you won't get that. So, Mark what? Uh, Mark twelve, twenty eight. You know, uh, in yours it's got an introduction here. The the religious leaders they like to argue. You know what? That that really hasn't changed much in our world. Uh, people still argue over what they think and. And I think tonight, though, we can discover there's really everything hinges on what's called two commandments, but it's really one. Uh, in some respects, it's like uh, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. 
that it, it says two, first one and second one, but they're not. That one hinges on the other. If you don't listen, if, if we don't love God, we will not and cannot love people. We cannot. We cannot. And if we do love God, we should love people because that's what He not only asks us to do, He commands us to do. And uh, I'll just read this. It says, um, Then one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that He had answered them well. And keep it, you know what, I've, said, I've read that verse I don't know how many times, over and over and over. But this is the first time in my study this past time that I saw this. I'd, I'd never seen it. I'll share it in a minute. Which is the first commandment of all? Jesus said, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your, our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and with all of your mind and with all of your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second like it is this. You should love your neighbor as yourself. There are no other commandments greater than these. No other, whether it's in Greek or if it's been in Hebrew or if it's been Aramaic or whatever it's in, no other in English still means no other. There's nothing greater than this, these two commandments. And really, if we, would, if we would obey these two commandments right here, guys, we would not have the problems we do in our families, in our world, in our churches, in in our businesses, in anything. Uh, it, these two are the most important. And I've been guilty of this too. Trying to write down and say, now here's all the things we need to do, and they're good things. They are good things. And you think of all these things, and you hear people say, well, in fact, I heard one the other day, I found this lady, and she checked off every one of the boxes. And I'm thinking, well, the, the, the mo most important box is, is she a Christian? Second, is, do you love her? Third, does she love you? All the other stuff, uh, you, you learn a lot once you get married, don't you? <laughs> That's a, it's a learning experience. They don't educate you in school about what it really means to be married. You learn on the, on the job. It's on-job training. And so uh, even though there's a lot of things in here, there were was, there was 600, uh, 613 laws. That is a bunch of laws. Have any of you, and I listened to Robert last night, he told me about the one time he got pulled over, but he did not get a ticket. Uh, have any of you ever exceeded the speed limit? Yeah. The <laughs> rest of you can repent for story. <laughs> Who was it that was going 60 in a 45 last night? Oh, he was the worst. You're going 60. You're going 60. You're going too fast. And so I'd slow down. But I was driving their car. I mean, it's got all the whistles and bells, and you don't even have to turn the bright lights on. It just does it for you. <laughs> I have no idea. It pulls you over when you're drifting. It does. Oh, you got it. You, all right. Yeah. Sweepy pulls me over when I'm drifting. So, and that, that's a true story. That's not even almost true. Uh, 613, 365 of them um, were called positive and, and the others were negative. And actually the way that they looked at those and the way Christ was answering this, we think in terms of numbers. Who's number one? Well, a lot of y'all here like Kansas, Kansas City being number one. We think in terms of number one, number two, number three. And there were 613 of those. And they were saying, well, which is number one? Which is the most important? I want to tell you, he, they called them light and, and heavy or light and weighty. And so they were trying to distinguish which one is the worst one. Not, not necessarily which is the most important. Which is the worst? As if there is. The last time I read, sin is sin. Yeah. Back in the 50s and 60s when I was growing up, uh, if you did something wrong, it was black. It was wrong. If you, if you did what was right, it was white. There was no gray. There was no gray. Now, they don't know what black and white is anymore. Everything's gray. And I'm not uh, saying this to, again, it, we just, we cannot, we can have to do it with love, but we cannot allow our country to continue to, um, to, to, to with the transgender. It, it can't happen, guys. We're in, we're in deep trouble if we do. We cannot have it with, well, you're a boy or you're a girl. Hey, listen, the birth certificate, doctors are not dumb. They know what kind of plumbing you got. And you're a male or you're a female. 
the biology book states there is a male and a female with the chromosomes. The Bible states there is a male and a female. It, it, when you go buy clothes, there's women's clothes and there's men's clothes. When you go to the restroom, there is a men's sign and a lady's sign. And there is a reason there. I can remember we were in Branson and I got up to go to the bathroom and I was just singing and I opened the door and went in, used the bathroom. And then when I got to go out, I looked and there was a lady, one of the workers, holding the door open. And I looked at her and she kind of looked at me and I said, I'm in the wrong one, aren't I? <laughs> she said, yes. Hey, there is a reason it says M-E-N and W-O-M-E-N. And, and you don't, we don't need, I don't dislike, don't, I don't hate, not angry at, not bitter at, but we need to love everybody as we see God created all of us. We need to see everybody through his eyes, but that's, that is sin. And sin is sin. It's not great. And uh, I, and I'm excited again, but our country has still got to come back to come to where God is preeminent in everything Amen. we Amen. do. Amen. And, and it's not going to get better just because, and I like it, I like it, I like it, but it's not, things will, things will be better, but things will not be godly until we re repent and return to Him. Yes. And that's really kind of what this is tonight. Uh, and the scribe he was talking about, you know, they did try to trick Jesus. And you know what? Sometimes we do too. We ask the same questions they do sometimes, don't we? Why did this happen to me? Can you explain that, Lord? Why did this happen? Robert and I were talking. I could not explain in December when I did a, a funeral for a 33-year-old who had overdosed on fentanyl, dead. And his little 8-year-old girl stood at the casket and looked at me and said, why? You know, I can tell you why. It's called sin. Yes, I am. And, and my Bible says all of us have sinned. I love you, Daryl, but you have sinned and still do a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm sorry. But as we go through this, I, I don't like to read. I do not. If, if you've been around me, you know I do not like to read things. So I'm going to, but I'm a, this week has been unbelievably crazy. Had it quickly. It seemed like every time I'd say, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to study this morning," and somebody would come in, spent three hours with the man the other day, came in. I, I'm usually here from eight to noon. Well, three hours of that was with this. Actually, three and a half was spent with this one man. So that day, that morning was shot. Then that afternoon, you get a call and say, "Can, can we talk to you?" That's that afternoon shot. And then the next morning, you're sitting there and the phone rings at four twenty and says, "We're in trouble." Or so I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you, I will probably read tonight more than what I normally read. I apologize, but I don't want to miss on these things, okay? It says, what is the greatest commandment? Well, the greatest commandment is to what? Love, God. Love the Lord your God. That is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. What does the word love mean? Uh, there are four words in the Bible that talk about love. Eros, which is a sexual type of love. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with having sex as long as it... In fact, last, sex is not bad. <laughs> hey, hey, we're family sitting in here. We're family. Is that not the truth? Yeah. As long as it's in the context of what God, how God created it. That's right. He said if you're married, you keep that sex within your marriage. Just you two. You don't have no one else. It's not a sharing. It's a. It's yours. It's, and and he intended for it to be great. If you're not married, it means you don't do any type of sexual activity, and there are consequences for it. Now, does that mean that a person's dying going to hell because they've had sex before they got married? The answer is no. God forgives all sin. He forgives every sin, and it, but that is the type. And I'm going to tell you the love that he said there. Love God with all your heart. That's not it. Uh, Storge, that is a, a family type of love. Now, all of us in this, I don't know if all of us, most of us in this room have, have experienced that. It's like a mom loves her daughter or her son. How many of you have children? That you, how many of you love, no, I better not ask that. <laughs> how many of you are angry at your kids? Anyway, you love them, though, don't you? That's the kind of love that is. God has equipped us to have that kind of love for our, or a, or a husband for his wife. It's a family type love. And we were missing that too. Satan is stealing our families every day, almost, every day, almost. We get a phone call. And if I told you, you'd think you're lying. So we can verify what I'm saying. I'm not lying. 
We, at least four, at least four, at least four families are in deep, deep trouble in their marriage. And it's over stuff that, ain't, that's stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. And the only thing we can tell them is give God a chance. But if both, if both of them give God a chance, and perhaps you'll be there someday, or perhaps I'll be there someday. I hope not, but you, you know what? Don't ever say it ain't going to be me. Don't ever say that. But if you give God a chance, he, if both of them do, it'll always work out. I really believe that. If both of them will. We've seen some where both did, and it's great. We've seen some where one did, and it didn't work. It's just not going to happen that way. But that, so I want to tell you, that's not the kind of love. Uh, Philea. What, what what city do we... Philadelphia. It's a city of what? Brotherly love. I thought you were fixing to smooch him. I saw you lean over there. Wow. Hey. Uh, but, but I'm going to tell you, that that's not it. But, but that's good. We need to have, We have brotherly love, that kind of love right here in this group, don't we? We love each other. We care for each other. We're family. This is a unique group, and I'm not saying anything bad about it. In fact, Tammy, where's Tammy? Tammy Weaver, I, I taught her, well, I taught her. I had her in class. She said I didn't teach her very well. But anyway, <laughs> Tammy, we're glad to have you tonight. Um, that's not it, but we, we, we've got that kind of love. But this is agape love. This is an unbelievable love. This is, in fact, I don't, I don't understand it. I know we have it because Christ, if Christ lives in you, if he lives in you, you have agape love. If he doesn't live in you, you don't have agape love. You can't have agape love because he is the source of agape love. Now, uh, these, these, this is the type of love it is. This is the word that's used in this context. Now listen, just because you see the word love, even the word love like with Peter, when, when Christ was talking to Peter, and he said, do you, he said, do you agape me? And, and Peter said, I phileo you. Phileo you. And it went back to the last one, and then Christ said, "Do you even follow me? Do you, do you? Do you? See, Peter didn't catch it. He didn't understand. He thought that was love, but the same thing every time. It doesn't. In fact, we've we've kind of cheapened it. We love our boats. We love our fishing. We love our animals. We love our food. You know, <laughs> sounds pretty good right now. Uh, it was a John three sixteen love." What is agape love? Again, I'm going, to, I'm going to read this. You can read it too. 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from whom? God. Love is from God. So let's, let's figure this out. I'm not real intelligent, but I, I think I got this one. If you don't have God, you can't have love. If you have God, you can have agape love. And, 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 uh, and whoever has been born of God and knows God. In fact, I don't know if it's... It's going to be in there somewhere in just a minute. We'll see it. Anyone who does not love God does not know God because God is what? Love. Listen, God doesn't just demonstrate love. That's not a characteristic of... That's not a characteristic of God. That's, that is who He is. God is love. God isn't just demonstrating. He's just not an expression of... He is love. Uh... And then the second one, First John. And the reason I've got all these, is there's nothing. I, you, I hope you didn't come to hear some kind of elaborate speech. Listen, if, I'm serious. I've seen people that can tickle our ears and make us all right and not get one iota of Bible teaching. Guys, the thing that's important is the Bible. It's not the orator. It's not. It's not. It's not the good-looking guy, which I'm not. Or. or Young man, which I'm not. It's the word of God that makes it. We get education, and there's nothing wrong with education. We agree with that. Yep. We we get education. God wants transformation. He wants to change our heart. We sang it a while ago. Change. Oh no, we didn't. We hadn't sang that yet. I'm hoping I'll have some help on it, but I may not. Uh, <laughs> number, number two, First John four nine. We love because he first loved us. We don't ever need to get to the point where we think we started love or created love. God started love by pursuing us, chasing us, creating us. And can you imagine how much fun he had? Uh, see, can you imagine when he was creating her? And said, wow, now she's going to have this color hair and this color eyes, and you saw those eyes, didn't you? You said, Wow, she's pretty. Yeah. Hey, he created us, guys. Don't you, don't you know he had fun doing that? 
and, and thinking, now this is how I want this person to look, and this is how I want, I want this is their personality, and so forth. In 1 Timothy 1 5, I really like this one. The goal or purpose, if you ever read any sales business or coaching or anything like that, you'll know you set up, you had purposes, you had goals. You set goals, and then you found out how to reach those goals, and then you decided how, you know, how to apply those to your life. And, and, and it says the goal of th this command is love. So what is the command? To love. Now here's the goal of it, which comes from a, a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Now, on the next page, or on mine, it may not be on yours. It said the word commandment. This is the commandment. That commandment is a charge. In this context, it is a charge. He is charging you. He is charging me. He said, I don't have something I want to throw out to you to think about or even to have to pray about. I'm telling you, I am charging you to love one another. I'm telling you, this is the greatest commandment. That you love me first and then you love everyone else. That even means, and don't, I, I have a probably 14 or 15 people that I pray for before I, after our family before I would pray for anyone in this room. And those are people that have hurt, offended my family, me, I, my wife, our children. And there's been times in my life, I hope you don't think less of me, but there's been times in my life I have been bitter against them. They hurt my family. And boy, that gets bad. And you know, I, I wanted revenge. In fact, there's been a couple of my boys... One of us get out of the truck. <laughs> he was pretty small at that time. About ten years later, I saw him. I'm sorry, I said it. He was really big. But uh, I pray for them, and here's what I pray. And I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to charge me. I'm going to charge you. When you get up in the morning, start with Psalm 139. Ask God, search my heart and see if there's any sin in me. If there is, forgive me. Forgive me. And start listening. God, forgive me for this and forgive me for that. Whatever it is that comes to your mind. And then I'm going to ask you. God, I pray, God, I ask you today to help me be kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving. That's, that's Ephesians 4.32. He says, but, uh, forgive them just as God has forgiven you, coach, through Christ Jesus. And that's the last time I checked it. When he went to Calvary, he forgave all of us for 100% of everything we would ever do that would separate us from him. And, and that's like marriage, marriage is not 50-50. Marriage is 100-100. You put your wife first, Christ first, obviously, both of them. But then you put your wife first, or if you're, you put your you put your husband first, whichever it is. You don't put yourself first. It's not it's not fifty fifty. It's a hundred hundred. And if you will love him with all of your heart, things will be better. If you will love her with all of your heart, put her first before yourself. Things will be better. They're gonna be. And uh, there were three things. It said, one, he wanted to teach sound doctrine. He said, when you're talking about loving God, teach sound doctrine. And it says, minor on the minors and major on the majors. And keep the main thing, the main thing. That's another thing we used a lot in coaching. Keep the main thing, the main thing. And I'm going to tell you the main thing is... I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be teaching. <laughs> Go on. Get I, get it, I get excited. Good. I tell you what, God... Hey, he worked me over. I, I went to the woodshed on this. I'm telling you, more than once, the main thing and the main thing and the main thing is Jesus. It can't be it can't be our car, it can't be our house, it can't be our prestige, it can't be our finances, it can't be anything except Jesus Christ. If we want to do what the Word of God says. Uh, and the second was a pure heart. Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see who? God. They shall see God. You want to see God? Have a pure heart. If you don't have a pure heart, you're not going to see God. You're going to see what you think and what I, want, I think. Psalm 51, 10, create in me a what? Clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. God, please renew my spirit. He didn't say renew his salvation. He didn't lose his, David didn't lose his salvation. He said renew, renew what's in me. You renew something that you already have. Renew that spirit. Uh, remember when we were first saved and you were hungry to go to church, you were hungry to, you're hungry to be in uh, RAs, GA. We even want to be in the GAs. RAs, G, how many of y'all remember what RAs are? Any of you? How about GAs? Okay. Training union? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sunday school? <laughs> when you studied the Bible. Okay. 
Uh, Psalm 119. Keep your young, how can a young man keep his way pure? Guard it according to the word of God. Not according to society, not according to Oprah, not according to your best friend, not according to anyone, although there's nothing wrong with good Christian counsel. But know what's in the, the if you know the word, you're going to have a better chance of keeping the word. I, most of us in this room, we got in trouble in school. Our excuse was, I didn't know. And that was a lie, so. <laughs> anyway, and then a good conscience. Uh, to have a good conscience means to keep keep your mind keep keep your mind out of the gutter. Yep. Keep your mind out of the gutter. If you don't, if your mind's and, hey, listen, we talked with a man not too long ago. I can't tell you, six close to sixty years old. His mind was in the gutter. It was fixing to cost him his marriage. Pornography. And he said, I just can't quit. I said, well, if you don't quit, you're fixing to lose your wife. Bottom line. No, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And, and praise the Lord. That man is getting his life right. And she's supporting him. And their marriage is going to make it. Because they both get got a chance. I'm going to go down to... Uh, it, what do, what do we do if our conscience alerts us that there's something in there that shouldn't be there? See, Satan condemns, the Holy Spirit convicts. He convicts it, and that's not bad when he says, listen, Bill, you don't want to think that. You don't want to look at that, Bill. You don't want to say that. You don't want to feel that. My Bible says when your conscience talks to us, we say, I want to repent. We've lost that in our country too. And I'm, gonna, I'm speaking to me first. A lot of it is not necessarily you men, but the men in the world. Because we've cowed down and are afraid to say, will you forgive me? We've cowed down and said, I'm sorry. And I know, and you're probably thinking, gosh, he's so negative. I, I don't want to be negative. I'm not negative. I want us to leave here with joy, not being, oh gosh, I've got sin in my life. Listen, if we repent, you can leave with joy. Because Psalm 1611 says, that in his presence is fullness of joy. And when you have sin in your life, it separates, and you don't have his presence. And when you don't have his presence, you can't have joy. I'm going to skip over some things to get to some things. Oh, three. When is the what is the first requirement before you can express agape love? Listen, God wants us to experience agape love. If you do not experience agape love, you cannot have it. In fact, we've got... Watch, real quick, Romans 3.23, what's it say? All sin. All sin. Does that include all of us? Does yeah. the word all in Greek mean all? What about Hebrew? What about English? Yeah, all. All sin. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is... Yeah. But the... Yeah. Of God is... Eternal. Eternal life. I'm going to tell you, that is... That is, what about your heart tonight? What about my heart? Guys, God, he's not playing games with us. And he has warned us, I believe he has warned us and warned us and warned us. And he's just like a daddy that says, son, I warned you for the what? Last time. I could be wrong. But I think God has given us a second chance. Well, more than really more than a second. I think he's given us a second chance. But he may be saying, listen, you piddle it around. Here's what you're staying in. You're hanging in work. You're just being comfortable in what you're doing. And that's what you're like before Christ. That's your heart, and that's Christ outside of your life. The other one is where Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. What, what would it be like if you were crucified? You'd be what? Yeah. yeah, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I like to live. You like to live? I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live with the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, that's what Jesus wants. And if we love him with all of our heart, that's what, that's what our heart will look like. What about your heart? I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm not trying to make me feel bad. I feel, I feel a lot better after a good shower. Do you, especially if you've been out in the dirt? Yeah. You know what? You feel a lot better when the Holy Spirit showers the red blood of Jesus Christ all over you and washes away that sin. Oh, you feel good inside again. And this is what you look like if He's not on the throne of your heart. 
How about your heart? And by the way, that one says, you've left your first love. Uh-oh. Jesus just said, love, love God with all your heart. And then Revelation says, oh, you've left your first love. It's not fun when you get in an argument. It's not fun. I hate to, we hate to deal with people that have left their first love. It's tough, but it happens. Uh, Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. He, he said the word strengthen. He wants to strengthen you. Uh, and, and how does he do that? In, in Ephesians 3, you can read this at home. How does he strengthen you? That was one of them. Loving with all your heart, mind, soul, and what? Strength. Okay. Uh, he strengthened you by the, His Holy Spirit. That's what He says. Who dwells in your what? Heart. That's what, love me with all your what? Love me with all your what? Heart. And He says here, you can have a strengthened heart if you allow the Holy Spirit in the word fill. We get that mixed up and there's nothing wrong with saying fill to overflowing. That's a good concept, but that's not the, that's not the biblical word. The biblical word for fill means controlled. It's not talking about overflowing. Oh, that's great. It should be. The, the word means controlled. If you're filled with the Spirit, and that's where a lot of people with the, some of the things that go on, they say, have you been filled with the Spirit? You bet. When I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life, I received every bit of the Holy Spirit. I didn't get a little bit of Him now, a little bit later. You receive all of the Holy Spirit you will ever get. What He needs is all of you. And, and, and He says, in your inner being, Christ dwells. He's rooted and you're growing in you. Uh, what are some characteristics of agape love? You can read those tonight because there's something that I want to get to, okay? There are some things that God cannot do. Do you believe that? you believe there's some things that God can't do? Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's some of them. It's not all of them. According to the Bible, there are several things that God cannot do. He cannot sin. Uh, he cannot cease to exist. He always has been. He cannot lie. He cannot fail to save the faithful. He cannot be second to anything. He wants to be preeminent in everything. And He cannot change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And guys, we ought to shout thinking that we've got a God that's not going to be wishy-washy. When you're doing good, He loves you. When you're doing bad, He doesn't love you. That's baloney. He is not. He's the same every day. Love is, is unchangeable. It doesn't change. And, and I don't think you probably agree with me on this. That's okay. I don't love Sweet Pea any more today than I did February the 16th, 1968. I appreciate her more. I respect her more. I, I have more of an intimate relationship with her. But when you love, love is love. There's not, there's not degrees of love. You love. What are some attributes? You can, you can read grace. What flows out? Why is it important for us to love God? Because this is His love for us flows grace and mercy. Grace and mercy flow out of love. In fact, in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians, it says there's faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is what? Love. Listen, all of these things, all of these things flow out of a heart of love. If you don't love, you're not going to have the faith that you should. You're not going to have the hope that you should. You're not going to care about other people like we, like we should. It's unconditional. Oh, and it is forgiving. Again, I already read it. That's probably one of my favorite verses. Be kind and tender-hearted to one another, forgiving one another. Oh, may does pride keep us from forgiving. And that's another thing. You would not believe if I told you the phone calls. I'm not speaking to my brother anymore. I haven't spoken to him in 15 years. I'm not speaking to my sister. I haven't spoken to her in 15 years. I hadn't spoke to my daddy in 10 years. I hadn't spoke to my children in 10 years. That's almost, not every day, but pretty close. Pretty close. See, we've forgotten how to forgive. We've forgotten how much Jesus... Do you what? Let's go to Calvary and, and uh, then we'll remember that. Uh, how much of my heart does he want? He wants all of my heart. That's where our thoughts are. We can get into that deeper, but that's where our thoughts are. He wants all of our mind. That's where we investigate things and think and have knowledge. And again, knowledge is great. We need knowledge. But we need education. But more than that, we need transformation. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, he said, uh, he didn't say to, to uh, get ed educate your mind. 
He said, I want to transform your mind. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As he wants to do that for us. Uh, and our soul, that is the deep seat where everything, where we communicate with the Spirit, communicate with God, where he speaks to us, to our spirit. His spirit to our spirit, Holy Spirit to our spirit. And it, it is eternal. He said, love me with part of your heart. That's pretty good, isn't it? What's wrong? No, I'm not going to get it wrong. Oh, love me with all of your heart. How, how important is all of your heart? I would like to share with you four places that I've seen that really are powerful. Look at the S. S. What does the S stand for in there? Seek. Here's what he says in Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. That's what he just got to saying. Love me with what? All your heart. Now, now he's saying, if you want to love me with all your heart, seek me with all your heart. You look for me. I'm there. I have moved. I'm there, I'm there when they say cancer. I'm there when they say heart trouble. I'm there when they say death. I'm there when they say d d divorce. I'm there when they say bankruptcy. Seek me. I am there. I, I had not left. I'm not going to leave. A. What's a, a? Adore. Now, the word adore is not in this verse. Uh, Psalm 9, 1 says, I will praise thee, O Lord. But a, a synonym for praise is adore. So we're going to substitute that. And it says, uh, I will adore you, O Lord, with what? All. all my heart. I will show forth all your marvelous works. Listen, when you adore someone, you tell them about them. Man, I, I can remember when I called home the first time, George, and I said, Dad, I'm not coming home for Easter. And he said, great, what's her name? I said, Elaine. <laughs> He knew. I adored her. She was the most beautiful, radiant, loving, godly person I'd ever met. And, uh, and he says, and I will give thanks to you, Lord, with what? All my heart. And I'm going to tell of your wonderful deeds. When you, when, if we love Jesus with all of our heart, we're going to tell other people. It's, it, it, you can't keep from it. You don't have to be a preacher or pastor. In fact, I could show you a list of 16, including Billy Graham, and who's, who did they say was the prince of uh, past preaching? You remember? Charles Spurgeon? Charles Billy Graham, Charles Spurgeon, and a list of 15 others, all that were, in, all that were involved in the major awakenings. None of them had, and they had zero seminary. Zero. You said, oh, Billy Graham had a doctorate. He was an honorary doctor from Baylor. Well, he went to, he did go to Bible college. But guys, what he's saying here, adore, if you adore him, you're going to tell people. You don't have to have a degree to tell people. If you, have, if you don't have Christ, you can't, but if you do, you can. And if you do have him, you should. The bottom line. L. Should what? We've already said this one. Love him with what? All of your heart. And I like this one. This is my life verse. T. We should trust him with all of our heart. Trust Him with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. You want to know how to love Him? Trust Him. You want to know how to respond to the adversity? Trust Him. You want to know how to respond when death hits you? Guys, trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. And it's hard for me. Not too long ago, I, didn't, I told Him, I said, Lord, I do not understand why I prayed for this and did not get it. I don't know if you've ever been there before. You probably have. Lord, I prayed for this. I didn't get it. And it was like He was sitting right beside me and He said, I didn't ask you to understand it. I ask you to trust me. I said, you're right. <laughs> and I asked him to forgive me. I said, let's start this prayer over. I said, Lord, I'm going to start it with, uh, uh, I'm praying in the name of Jesus, and I'm going to end it with, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. And some pastors will tell you, don't pray that, because then you're trying to cop out in case something doesn't happen like you want it. That's not the truth. If my Jesus can pray it, I can pray it. We've got to trust him. Matthew 5, 13. That's spelled salt, didn't it? Matthew 5, 13. You might be the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Everyone in here that is Jesus Christ, you are the salt of the earth. 
and it's getting time. I'm going to have to... You, you can take this and read this. I do want to close with the end part of it, though. And I didn't bring it tonight, Robert. Maybe sometime. There are three places. That, for me, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what I was going to do. It happened to us at church camp one year. We had, a, we had youth. We went to a camp for 49 straight years. We took youth. Sometimes two camps a year. It was awesome. They taught us. <laughs> we didn't teach them, they taught us. But at one of them, they said, we want all the youth directors to come up. We all got on the stage and sat down. We didn't know what they were going to do. And then he said, uh, now I want you to take your shoes and socks off. And then they brought out a pan of water and set it down. And they said, I want all those that work with the youth, and this is your youth director, if you feel like you can do this, you come. And you're going to wash their feet. You talk about a humbling experience. And then, I got down and we put sweet pea up there. What a humbling experience on both sides. And the, and the three things I saw that were the absolutely best, three times <laughs> love is expressed in the garden. In the garden. When he said, Lord, is, is there any way for this cup that's the, he's God man. This is the man. Is there any way for this cup to pass from me? Nevertheless, what? Boy, hey, there's not any. You think that is love? Hey, take my life or, or take Rick's life. Take mine. Don't don't take his. That's what that was. Not my will. Let him live. The second one at the cross. Now, there's no no greater love at the cross. And here they are killing him, they're embarrassing him, they're stripping him, they're playing, they're gambling for his clothes, they've called him names, they've injured him. Uh, and, and for me, I said, boy, if I get down from here, that's kind of like what you told that guy, Robert, said, if that guy does that one more time, I'm going to punch him. That was it when he was a kid. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instead, I said, I'd like to punch him. He said, Father? What did he say? Father what? Forgive them. Is there any greater love? And then, and then the basin. You see what? You know why that's a great example of love? We said, well, they loved him. Yeah, they did. But he washed twenty-four feet, not twenty-two. See, he washed Judas's too. The man who would betray him, and he knew it. The man who would betray him, and he knew it. As I hope when we leave tonight, three things. Would you, tomorrow, would you just ask God to search your heart? Would you confess your sin if you have sin and need to? And would you ask God, God, this is a toughie now. Would you help me love you with all my heart and mind and soul and strength? And would you help me love my enemy? And would you pray, God, today... He's not my enemy. He may be my best friend. I don't love, I love this guy. But it'd be like if he was my enemy, saying, God, would you help me love Robert? Would you help me be kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving? And you see tonight, if, I, if we'd had time, I'd done it. I was going to bring the basin, bring Robert up, make him take his shoes off, his socks off, and wash his feet. Because there's no greater. And you know what he said? I want you all to do the same thing. He's not talking about doing it physically. And I know y'all need to go. As you're going out the door, maybe you can sing it. Uh, Robert, you care to... Daryl, you want to you wanna help me or no? D Robert, yes or no? Sing this song right here. We're going to sing a song real quick. And then we're, that, this is going to be the closing. It's not even going to be a prayer. It's going to be the closing. Change my heart, oh God. How many of you know it? Here it goes. Like this. You want to help me, Robert? Seriously. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Now that we've heard it, let's sing it one more time. 
And, and I want it to come from my heart to God's heart. God, this is what I want you to do tonight. I want you to change my heart. I want you to change my heart. Are you ready? <clears throat> ready? Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change your my heart. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Love you all.